right, here we are. We're so thank you. Okay, cue the, cut the music. It's good. It's good. Yeah, it's hard to find good banjo music these Impossible. days. Impossible. I know, right? <laughs> but it is the best. All right, welcome to the Exertus Broadcast Podcast. I am your host, Nick Smith. Today, I am joined in studio by Mr. Joshua Kelly. Good to be here. Newly minted sales guy. I know, I know. Ooh. Congratulations on making your move to the dark side. I know, Appreciate I've it. been told. <laughs> and joining us on screen on Skype and out of the Pacific Northwest, it's Mr. Rick Paleo. Hello, everybody. All right, all right. Okay, today's show is brought to you by New Tech, uh, the, the New Tech Stream and Demon High Energy Drink. This thing's pretty amazing. I have five bucks to whoever can down two of these in an hour. I mean, it's only... 128 milligrams 120 milligrams of caffeine i mean that's you know it's really nothing yeah stay up all night to mm -hmm. do it over again <laughs> i love it um all right no today is a, a new tech focused show i'm really excited we are going to talk today this first episode here about how to choose the right tricaster like what are the sort of the 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 markers we're looking for when we're choosing from the different tricaster hardware um, so Rick, I'm going to kick it off to you to kind of start the conversation here. We, since you and Josh do most of the demos for clients, you're getting involved with the end user to kind of discuss with them the, you know, on how to choose or what they should choose. Give me some of the hallmarks that you guys look to in choosing the right TriCaster for the client. Well, where I start with is the number of required inputs, the number of required outputs, and then how many DSKs do you need? And I'm gonna go off on a little tangent here, but when I talk about number of live inputs, meaning live sources, and when we watch something like any sports environment, this is a good starting point where you can go with. Let's take motorsports, a Formula One race. A Formula One track is about five kilometers or more long with up to 20 turns. So you could have up to 30 cameras around the track so that you can go to them at any point to get the action. And we're talking at any point that you have to go live. So in addition to those 30 plus cameras, you're gonna have graphics, multiple graphic sources to put up, not to mention replay from a number of those 30 cameras. So you could have 60 or 80 inputs that you need to go to at any live, at any moment. So that's an extreme case, but that is a starting point what to think about when you're thinking about how many live inputs do I really need? And the reason why I start there is because we know that we can have as many NDI inputs on our network as we want, but again, how many live inputs will you require in any given show to go to immediately? So that's kind of like the part where I like to start with. How many live inputs do you really need? And so, then we go from there. So, so you reference somebody like NASCAR with 30 cameras. I mean, well, let's face it, like, you know. Formula One, please. For, oh, sorry, sorry, Formula <laughs> Man, I'm going to get slapped down for that one later, ladies. Um, <laughs> so ideally, though, I mean, most of most of the, you know, client, the day-to-day -day clients are churches and schools. I mean, yeah. and, or city councils. And for most of them, we're talking like, you know, four to five cameras, right? Exactly. So, so the story is a little bit smaller for, I would say, your typical everyday, uh, every other day client. Um, let's talk about the other two. I mean, you said outputs and you said DSKs. Right. So, so in terms of in terms of outputs, um, all the tricasters, all the uh, most of all the tricasters, with the exception of one, have four unique outputs, meaning that you can essentially switch four different shows if you choose to. It's possible to do that. So, uh, for example. Uh, the monitor that you're seeing me here in the studio, um, Jordan, who's punching this show, could actually switch it to something completely different, and you utilize an M&E to send it out that unique output. Um, you could have another output that is feeding a display backstage. So that is very, very useful, and uh, having that having that knowledge of exactly how many unique outputs that you need is pretty important so that you know, you know you can choose how you want to work and what are what is required in your productions. So so that was uh, a that was a key differentiator right there. Um, because I think sometimes people get confused. They go, well I gotta feed the cable system. I gotta mm -hmm. feed the distribution system. I need the monitor up on the screen, but it's unique outputs, right? Yes. It's it's not yes. not the same output through a distribution amp or a router or something. It's just unique individual exactly. outputs. Exactly. 
exactly. And and for example, for example, let's take let's take a house of worship. So uh, within within the house of worship, you're going to have your live streams. You're going to have an output that your offsite viewers are going to see. So you're going to have lower third graphics that are going to, you know, that they're going to be able to view. Well, you could have a secondary output that can have full screen graphics, uh, verses, um, uh, lyrics, the songs. So those are some of the features that, that I think are things to think about. Uh, when you're choosing a model. And and the point that I want to make about that is that that is also going to take into account how many inputs do you require? Because if you're going to have a lower third graphic uh, from a source such as ProPresenter, you can also have a full screen graphic that is reflecting the same information. So that's two inputs on your switcher that you have to take into consideration. So Joshua, that's a great point. So when it comes to inputs, cameras are not all, you know, mm -hmm. what are some of the other, you know, when you're talking to clients, what are the other, some of the sources that they're talking about bringing in? I mean, anything else on your network, we're talking from just, you know, a basic computer, just any kind of CPU that can run, you know, NDI tools, um, just screen capture and bring that on. Um, and then just, it, it comes from, you know, pulling in live graphics from a CPU, um, whether it's a third party or you just use the integrated graphics on the TriCaster. Um, those can be some of the other inputs, as well as, I mean, we haven't even brought up audio uh, and yeah. bringing we're, in we're, audio. With, that's, that's a whole nother oh, episode. Let's come back to that <laughs> one on a later date. Um, so, so okay, so uh, and then the last one you tagged on, Rick, was DSKs, right? And the yes. importance of choosing the DSKs. And, and do you differentiate those from MEs um, when you're making this decision? Yes, yes. Because a DSK, a DSK is your downstream keyer and it's generally happens on your main program bus. So um, the TriCaster Minis and the TriCaster 410 Plus have two DSKs. The TC1 and the TC2 Elite have four DSKs. So I'm gonna be kind of silly here because I could say this is one DSK and this is another DSK, meaning this lower third graphic here and this bug that's over here. It's, a, it's actually um, point the other direction. All right, that way. There Sorry. it is. There it is. Sorry. Perfect. <laughs> so those can essentially be two, two separate DSKs. Now, the thing is, is that each M&E has, has keyers as well. So that allows you to have DSKs going out your separate output. So a DSK is after the program switch, meaning that they can remain up as you're switching the sources underneath them. However, in an M&E, and if you set your M&E into your program, well, it's all kind of baked into that one M&E input. So I hope that makes sense. No, no, I think it's such a light. So Jordan, I think you've got some mix, every, mix master Jordan, everybody. It's got <laughs> some content for us. If you roll that first slide up on screen. I think on our side. So obviously we talked about what is an input, right? And it's it's not just physical sources, it's IP sources, it's NDI, it's computers. You hit that one really good. Um, so that's good. Let's go to our next one, unique output. So again, that unique part is really important here. Talking about, you know, the different, oh, and this is a great one, not to be confused with monitor outputs. I mean, I think Rick, in the early days of the mini, the number one call we got was, uh, I, which, which HDMI output am I supposed to be using? Right. Right. Oh. Yeah. If you remember that. And then before we skip on the unique output, I think it's um I think it's important to to show that beyond just live streaming two different outputs and having a program output that, that can be a clean feed, how important that can be in a post production sense when you're trying to take that live stream and you know put it into, you know, whether it be a VOD system or you want to host it on your CDN. So having those having those, you know, multiple outputs, I think a lot of people can just be like, oh well, this is just why do I need, you know, a clean output, a clean oh. output, and then, you know, an output with, you know, a couple of um, overlays on it? Because when it comes down to the post and you're trying to create a show just outside of that live stream and really double down on the content, that's the importance of having those kinds of unique outputs. So that clean output effectively. So for anybody in the audience who doesn't know, clean means it's we're recording the mixed 
um, feed that we generate, like all the cuts and the switches, but without any of the extra DSKs or the graphics so that an editor can then take that and make changes to it later without having to deal right. with the graphics, right? So or, no, it is, it is a good, oh, Rubik's got an or. Or, <laughs> or you could assign your clean feed as one of your outputs hmm? and essentially add foreign language, either, either, um, either a foreign caption below there or foreign language or subtitles underneath there live or foreign language lower third graphics. And that can happen live as well. So those are all options to you. Josh, I'm, take, a little more I'm, gear. I'm taking your can now because Rick okay. is starting to stress my brain out a little bit here. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to need the extra caffeine. It's all good. It's all good, everybody. Remember, only 116 milligrams per can. You can get this at your favorite grocery store starting on Tuesday. Um, all right. So... Okay, we've got sort of like the inputs, the outputs, the DSKs. Jordan, you've got a graphic there, if you'll bring that one up, which is sort of the call out of the different TriCasters. Um, all right, here we go. So as of today, and I like how you, you broke this out. So there's the mini, the mini SDI and the mini HDMI, then the mini 4K. These are two very different products. It's important to keep in mind, right? Um, that they work a little bit different. They have some different sourcing. And then we've got the 410, the TC1, the TC2 Elite. So ideally, if you're out in the ether and you're trying to decide what is the TriCaster I need to get, this is a really good roadmap here to say like, what are the number of inputs I need? And what are the number of outputs I need? And what are you know the other features? So right as we call it down, the, the minis in the SDI and the HDMI, four inputs, two outputs, right? And eight NDI inputs and four NDI outputs. Now, Rick, are those mix and match or is it a total of 12, right, on the mini? Well, there's only eight live inputs available to you on the TriCaster Mini line. Okay. So when 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 you look at when when you look at the program switch, you have inputs one through eight. And you can mix and match in those, they can be all NDI, they can be four, they can be two SDI, or if you have the HDMI model, two HDMI and six NDI. So, but you have eight live inputs on the switcher panel. So eight live sources. So, perfect. Okay. So yeah. So going back to that, then, so it's like a client who's looking at their account going, well, I got five cameras and I'm going to bring in two computers. Like right away, you're sort of at seven inputs and you're saying to yourself, right. I'm, I'm maxing myself out. Um, when yeah. we move up to the mini 4K, same story, right? On the 4K, it's only eight inputs total, mm -hmm. um, except for we have no HDMI or SDI. So it's pure IP. Now that one does yes. come out of the box with a couple of encoders, plus so many of the cameras, like the ones here in studio today have NDI built into them. Special thanks to Canon. Yeah, we see you there. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, so very much so along the lines of, you know, that um, total number of inputs. Now let's jump up to the 410 because this one's a little bit of an anomaly. What is its total input count? Eight. Okay. So eight, eight live inputs on the switcher panel. Okay. So still only eight inputs, but we've got a little bit of a mix. What is the big differentiator though, between the 410 and the, and say any of the mini? So they all have eight inputs, but there's obviously some changes here. Yes. It is a two RU rack mount chassis. The and and it, which is necessary. I mean, so many people don't want a box sitting yes. on a table. The Mini is a great portable solution. The 410 is all the same horsepower, but in a rack, right? We can install it. We can lock it down and, and you know, and it's it's a good install piece, but you get all the same features. All cables, all, all connections are on the back of the chassis. So yep. it is a it is a standard rack mount chassis, power button in the front and everything else plugs in the back. All right, now for the next two, this is where things get a little squirrely. This is where they, they really grow here. We look at the TC1. This is where the numbers effectively double, right? So we're still on the TC1, four SDI in and four SDI out. So those are actual physical connections on the back panel, but our total number of sources effectively double and we're up to now 16. And the brilliance there, the brilliance there is, is that you have 16 live inputs on there, but four downstream keyers. Um, so one there, one there, two in the corner. Um, and you have four SDI outputs, four true SDI outputs. And one of the things I didn't mention is that on the mini, both the HDMI and SDI version, you have two baseband outputs. 
So um, you do have four unique outputs, but two of them are SDI on the SDI model, HDMI on the HDMI model, and then you have two unique NDI outputs. So fair enough. And now, and now as we jump to the TC2, once again, things double, right? It's kind of like Moore's law here, right? Where every time we go yes. up in, uh, in pattern, we go higher. So with the TC Elite, the TC2, we've got eight SDI, physical SDI ins and eight out, but a total of 32 total channels available to us, right? So we can, I mean, it, it, and, and how do we look on the, actually, Jordan, I think you have this on the next slide if you jump forward one. Um, now we talk about DSKs and DDRs and graphics and all those pieces. Yes. Yeah. And so this one, this one effectively doubles on our input side, um, but you can see on the output side, graphics, everything else are the same. Yeah. Yes. All right. So now one thing I will mention that is across all of these products is actually how Rick is coming to us today. So we called him on Skype via the embedded Skype channel in the TC1. Now that's available in the mini, the TC1 yes. and the TC2, not in, I, mean, I would say the mini 4K, not right. the other mini. But the channels vary between the models, the right. amount of Skype channels vary. So it's one to two. Right. Um, but this is an embedded Skype channel right in the TriCaster. That's what we're, we're calling Rick directly through it. Um, and so, you know, no additional hardware required other than the, the TX interface, um, which is pretty easy to use. Yeah. All right. Yes. So. So that's sort of our breakdown. And again, I think, you know, as, as Josh, you mentioned earlier, number of sources, number of outputs, number of, of downstream keyers, all these things are sort of the roadmap to sitting down and saying, what is the right TriCaster for me? Right. Which one should I be using? Right. Well, what, you just got to break down what the correct workflow is. Are you guys, do you have Ethernet drops in the, in the camera spots? Mm -hmm. You might want to be looking at NDI. Are you guys more, you know, comfortable with, you know, an SDI workflow or an HDMI and you want to deal with you know, possibly doing HDMI extenders. Got it. You know, there's ways to do it, NDI, uh, but we're all NDI. NDI. Yeah. I just say the magic yeah. word. And uh, anytime that I get on, you know, a call with a client mm -hmm. and their push is to be, uh, you know, video over IP, I'm just, I just, I breathe easier. Yeah. Because I'm just like, <laughs> okay, thank God. All right, perfect. And they're like, yeah, I'm putting a 10 gig switch in here and I'm going to have it all on, this, you know, on the same network and, you know, have it on a standalone network. I'm like, ah, you, you got it. You're yeah, done. you got to figure it, just it out. Works. It's perfect. All right. Well, that's our episode today. If you have any questions, if you're interested in choosing the right TriCaster for you, please hit us up at jbna.com or now to be known as Exertus Broadcast. Hold on. We're going to show up the new shirt. There it is. Right over here. There. Wait, right there into the camera. Everybody, Exertus Broadcast. All right. Nice. We're going to call this episode and we'll see you on the next.